a breakout ride, uh, a new contender, perhaps, maybe even title contender here in the 250 class? Yeah, I think Chance Hymas is in exactly that breakout mode. Confidence wise, I think it really proved to Honda that they made the right decision. And I know that everybody who's been behind him for a long time through the ups and downs, that was a win for a lot of different people, not only Chance Hymas. Uh, like his mom, who we saw in tears, and his dad we're very familiar with. He's at all the races. Chris, he's a great guy. And also the Lawrence brothers, JT, who have a very close relationship, not just as teammate, but he rides at their facility. That was really cool to see the emotions pouring out for everyone. And we'll continue this family topic. So we're headed to High Point this weekend. High Point was once a legendary race, kind of in the vein of Redbud, which has the July 4th weekend. High Point used to take, on, take place on Memorial Day weekend, which means most people have an extra day off on Monday. And it was a really big, I'm going to use the word party atmosphere at the event. Now, for the benefit of the whole series and the industry to get a few more West Coast rounds in in May and move High Point back was the right move. But I do feel like for a while, High Point suffered by losing its traditional date. It's kind of rebuilt itself now around the Father's Day theme, which again, we'll have this weekend. And we know how motocross works. JT, you, you as well as anyone, the integration of fathers and the athletes. Yeah, it, it is a great weekend, right? Because you simply just can't really do this sport without your family behind you. It is such a family sport at its core. And for many of these riders to get to celebrate Father's Day at this round is a really cool thing. Now it's time to talk Hayden Deegan, who has maybe the most well-known father in the game. And their whole plan, and this has been going for a long time, Hayden Deegan has been on the radar as a 50cc rider all the way through. It is coming to fruition. Although I will say, I think if you had quizzed people a few years ago, JT, on what would Hayden Deegan be like as a pro, I think people are expecting flash, style, this grit, this fitness, this dog in him. That has really become his calling card, and man, is it really paying off now on motocross. And I always say in pro motocross, you simply cannot fake the fitness, the ability to handle the heat, all those things that pro motocross asks, you cannot fake. Let's go to the standings here in the 250 class. So Deegan pulling away, it feels like it's been closer than this when we look at the 250 motocross standings. Yeah, he's won a lot, but there's been some battles. Look at this, almost a full moto lead, 23 points. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's been domination. And that's the scary thing. If you are Tom Vial, let's throw Chance Hymas into that equation now as well. And of course, Levi Kitchen, I think all of them are like, hey, we've kind of, we've been in the fight. It hasn't been like a runaway, but then you look at the points and then you get a little bit nervous because as you mentioned, we're almost up to a moto and Hayden Deegan is slowly, but surely building up a huge lead here. So by the time one of these other riders kind of finds their rhythm, it might not matter. Hayden Deegan might have such a big lead by that point that he can start managing this series. Now, we're not there yet, but if we continue with this trend, they're going to look up at halfway and realize that they're a full race down worth of points, and then what? JT, can you imagine what it's like to ride with Jet Lawrence every day and then to try to keep your confidence up and believe, no, I could also be champ. That's got to be a challenge. Yeah, it is, and, and I get it. I, I think it probably is the right approach to, to winning championships is – just like an NFL quarterback, right? Never too high, never too low. But the one thing I would say is one day he's going to look back and say, you know what? There were really good days where I was enjoying all the success. Maybe allow yourself a moment to enjoy that before you start thinking about getting back to work on Monday. And you can see it in the standings. We'll show you the 450 motocross standings here. Now, the gap is not large. And I think that's another reason why Hunter's not trying to get ahead of himself. This is far from, oh, I'm in position to win this title. But he has the red plate. And the other thing is you can see Jet has moved up now in the standings from sixth coming in. We'll also show you the SMX standings. And Lawrence, Jet continues to have a lead. Hunter has moved up to uh, fifth, tied with the idol Cooper Webb. So that's the story there from a numbers perspective. Now we have to go to the other side of it. I think we all thought, maybe we all didn't think that Hunter Lawrence would be holding the red plate three races into his 450 motocross career. I think we all thought Chase Sexton had turned a corner and was going to be unbelievable again in Thunder Valley. What happened? The one silver lining and the positive that I think he has to take away from this is in that second moto, he was very aggressive, was able to make passes. He was going to the front. Without that mistake, I think he wins that moto. I, I really do. And if I was around him, if I'm his coach, his father, Keir, anybody, I'm telling him like, hey, first moto, 
we weren't there. But the second motive, that's what we need. We need that aggression. We need that speed. Maybe just, you know, time your passes a little bit better, but that's exactly where you want to be. And then finally, we talk about this statement win from Jet Lawrence. He's not just a grip it and rip it sprint. He uses it only when he needs it. And he had just, just enough to get this done. Yeah, he showed a lot of resiliency this weekend, and that's the word I kept thinking about because it would have been very easy to start worrying about Chase Sexton, to worry about his injury, let all those negative thoughts creep in, but he was able to overcome all of that. All right, High Point Raceway this weekend, about an hour south of Pittsburgh, right on the West Virginia, Pennsylvania state line. JT, you've raced here a million times. Did you race here even as a kid, like even before the pro days? What's the track like? It's right, you know, and to me, the biggest question here will be how do the riders manage the change in terrain? Because you always hear the riders, they go to this East Coast swing and they're like, oh, everything I thought I knew about my motorcycle was wrong. I have to change everything. So both this weekend at High Point and the next round at Southwick, watch for those riders be pulling in the mechanics area. You're going to hear comments in the interviews about changes to the motorcycle all day. We're just way off on settings. That's because we're crisscrossing the country. We're going to completely different terrain, lots of ruts, softer dirt. Maybe there will be weather in the, the forecast. We don't know, uh, but that's to me, is the biggest change that we're going to see. Yeah. Uh, also, we haven't seen the super deep ruts that we sometimes see at these opening rounds. I don't think Hangtown was as rutted as it has been in the past. Colorado, definitely not. So do you think this is going to lead to even more variants? Because you know you're going to get deep ruts at high point. Yeah, last year I thought Thunder Valley gave these guys a little insight. It was so soft and so ruddy, right? So they kind of knew how their bikes would respond going to a track like High Point. There's been none of that this year. It's been much harder, a much harder surface at all three rounds than they're going to see this coming weekend at High Point. So watch for that. Again, we don't know who it's going to strike the hardest, but think about the guys that are the most sensitive. Maybe a Chase Sexton who's never raced this track on a KTM before. Watch for those things to play a role this weekend. And if you want to watch, here's how you do it. It'll be Peacock and the SMX video pass all weekend long. 10 a.m. is race day live qualifying coverage presented by motosport.com. That's an hour show. And our racing begins at 1 o'clock Eastern. It'll be four straight hours of coverage of the motos. And then we have a halftime show and a post-race show we'll roll right into. And also cool, we're going to capitalize on some of the momentum that we... Hi, folks. Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched... You can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.